can have a very big rally. From the end zone to the boardroom, that's the path of our next guest. Joining us right now is former Super Bowl winner and New York Giants wide receiver Phil McConkey. He is now a president of Academy Securities. That's a broker dealer firm that is staffed in large part by post 9 11 military veterans. And, sir, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, Becky, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You know, I, I knew you as the former giant superstar. What I did not realize is the background you've had, not only the last two decades that you've spent on Wall Street, but you're a military veteran and not just a military veteran. You were a naval aviator and a nuclear weapons transshipment pilot. Uh, that is probably one of the most wide varying uh, backgrounds that I've ever seen from anyone. Uh, what, what was it about football that uh, eventually led you into the securities industry? And are there skill sets that uh, match up in both those industries? Well, the first thing I have to correct you on, Becky, I was not a superstar. I was a role player on a great, great team. We, we had a lot of superstars. I wasn't one of them. But I think the connection you were between in Super Bowl what 21. I did. All right. So I had a, I had a good day once, a long time ago. But. But I think what you, when you look at the military, when you look at professional football, when you look at the securities industry, the common denominator is it is an extremely competitive environment. So all the skills that I learned and that I practiced in my first two careers really apply here in the securities industry. And that's why we are looking for veterans to fill every role within our company at Academy Securities. And the securities industry and corporate America on the whole are doing the same thing, trying to replenish their workforce with some highly trained, highly motivated, incredible people that are transitioning from the military back to civilian life. What is it about people from the military you think that makes them so well suited for the securities industry? Well, think about it. You know, in the securities industry, you're picking stocks or you're picking bonds, you're making sales calls, you're organizing, you've got teams that you have to get in place. Who better to execute that business plan than people that have been trained for that over the last decade or so? And they're doing it while they're evading landmines, being shot at, the stress that they're under, their ability to perform under those incredible circumstances, uh, we think make them very suited not only for a Academy, but J.P. Morgan, who was our mentor, uh, they're suited for CNBC. They could make any organization better because of what they've been through. This military that we have now is a lot different than even when I was in a generation ago. It's highly technical. Uh, they have to perform under stress. They've got to solve problems. So with them coming back into the workforce, you know, we're all very positive, optimistic people, especially us veterans. And when you see these people and what they have done come back into the workforce, over the long haul, and I know we talk about the markets today in the near term, the short term, but the long term, with the assimilation of these kinds of people, uh, it could only bode well for us as a country uh, and our markets and our economy. The thing you've got to remember about most of these people that are coming back right now, they joined the military after we were attacked on 9-11, right. after the war in Afghanistan started, after the war in Iraq started. That tells you all you need to know about who they are and their character, and if anybody has any doubt doubts about where we're going as a country, just go meet some of these people. In fact, better yet, go hire some of these people and change the culture of your company from within. You know, Phil, you make excellent points, and I agree with you 100 percent. I've heard the, the same uh, points brought up by J.P. Morgan, where they've been talking about these things. What I don't understand is why, why is it that uh, veterans' unemployment levels run probably twice what the national average is? Yeah, it is running twice the national average. And whatever number you look at, it's an ugly number. And people are doing, and corporations and even the public sector, they're, they're really reaching out and trying to attract these kind of veterans to their entities. Now, one of the problems is for the veterans themselves, the skills that they learned in the military, the problem solving, the discipline, the teamwork, the leadership, all those things, for them to understand how those skills and traits actually do translate into the private sector, into corporate America, even on the municipal level. So getting them to understand and helping them and training them, that's something that we do at Academy. J.P. Morgan, who's our mentor under the U.S. Department of Treasury Mentor Protege Program, Matt Zames uh, at the COO of J.P. Morgan, they've got programs there to help these people understand how they fit into corporate America. And then on the other side, Becky, it's getting the corporations to understand how these great people can enhance their company and give them the best chance 
of success. As a former athlete, I've been hired so many times by corporations to go talk to their people, talk to their management about leadership, uh, about teamwork. Who better to explain that and to be able to take those skills and change a company from within than a military veteran? Hey, Phil, it's Ben White from Politico here. I'm a huge Redskins fan, so I have to say that I'm a bigger fan of your post-football <laughs> career than your uh, football <laughs> career. You drove me nuts a few times going over the middle. But a uh, question for you is, in terms of matching up the skills with these veterans with Wall Street firms, there's a lot of programs on Wall Street, sort of boot camps that get uh, post-collegiate folks ready for these jobs that don't necessarily know the ins and outs of, of the markets but have the leadership skills you talk about. Is there a way to funnel veterans into those kind of Wall Street training programs to uh, sort of, you know, skill them up with the things they might not know necessarily on the technical side of markets, even though they have those leadership and managerial skills? Yeah, there are many programs right now. And again, at Academy, we're, we're a small company. Hope to be big uh, as we go forward. Our growth is, is very rapid right now. And we do what we can to help train these people. And again, we can only scratch the surface and barely move the needle. But we are acting as a conduit to something much bigger. J.P. Morgan and Wall Street, with other bulge bracket banks, have, have a, a 100,000 jobs mission to train and hire veterans. And you're starting to see this throughout corporate America, where large corporations are uh, starting programs similar to that. And you go down to the uh, grassroots level, uh, Roger Staubach, uh, my hero and legend in Dallas, has his own uh, entity that he started to help train and hire veterans. So you're starting to see a lot more of this in our country right now. The reception is, is tremendous, especially when you compare it to, you know, the last couple wars. I'm talking about Vietnam and Korea. But again, when you look at the greatest generation ever, and what what they did after World War II, saving us from tyranny, providing us great freedom, then coming back and rising us to levels of prosperity unseen in the civilized world. We believe that these returning veterans you know, have that same ability, and they will do that. So our future is bright. Phil, to ask you one more question while you're here, there has been so much that's been focused on the concussions from football players. As a former football player, are you concerned about this? And do you think there's something we should be doing to change the game uh, to protect our children in particular? Yeah, absolutely. I think the NFL is doing everything they can right now to find ways to protect the players. Uh, and when you go down to the Little League level, to, to find ways to protect the kids from head injuries, from concussions. Uh, it, it's happening right now. Uh, I just feel awful for the guys that I played with, the guys before me and after, the guys that are in dire need. And I know there's a lot of concussion lawsuits out there, and I'm not a member of any of those suits right now. I've gone back and forth in my own head. How do I best support my colleagues, the guys that are really suffering? Does it help if I'm a member of a lawsuit or if I'm not? Uh, I've been battling with that, but I do know that there are guys that are suffering and they need real help right now. And uh, we're trying to do everything we can. The league, I think, is doing a really good job with it, but it is a violent game. A yeah. very violent game. So uh, how do you balance the two, protect the players and then have this extremely competitive product that's maybe the most popular sport uh, in our country? Yeah. Well, Phil, we want to thank you very much for joining us. We appreciate you um, highlighting everything that you're doing with veterans, and we hope we get to talk to you again soon. Thank you so much, Becky. I appreciate it. Coming up. Don't start your trading week without Jim Cramer's stocks to watch. We're going to check in with him at the New York Stock Exchange next. And don't miss Squawk Box tomorrow. Michelle Caruso Cabrera is going to bring us another exclusive interview, this time with Mexican billionaire Carlos Slim. Tomorrow on Squawk Box, two hours with the master of management. Jack Welch will join us to talk about jobs, taxes, the economic recovery, and a lot more.